Greetings everyone, Cloudprof here. First, I want to say that I'm really grateful that we've made it this far together. You are all amazing people and I truly, truly appreciate every single one of you. Now, when you think about the Dark Ages, what comes into your mind? Knights in heavy armor, maybe castles nestled on high places with tall walls and large towers? Busy villages and farmhouses, maybe some large marketplaces? A large variety of foods, tools, weapons, clothes and more. I'd like you to follow me into this short medieval adventure where I aim to bring back to life a medieval castle in the world of Valheim. Let's go! First thing I wanted was a really good seed, so after a second attempt I stumbled upon this seed and I found a really cool spot overlooking a lake on a small island and I think it fits perfectly for this build. This is the small little island overlooking the lake. I really think that this is the perfect spot for such a build and it was really easy to find this spot, not gonna lie. The only reason I picked it is for the view, honestly. Next, I started clearing this patch of land. Tried my best to take down rocks, trees and all the debris so I can have a nice smooth place where I can build. This is how the area looks after everything is cleared. The next step was flattening the ground. I know there are some mods for this, but I really wanted to do this manually because I wanted to have three different levels where I built the castle. One for the keep, one for the houses and one for the walls. An area view of all the hard work. And the very next step for me was actually working on the walls. Thankfully I could have I could use the Grosten floors, the 2x2 two two floors, as a base or, or as a foundation for the walls. I was really happy with the walls, this is how they turned out. They're not super super flat or even. The very next thing was thinking about the towers, so I didn't want to do anything crazy. I just wanted a square shape for the towers, so we're going with square towers for this build. And this is the shape of the castle with the walls and the towers. I also started working on the gates, so we're gonna see two small entrances. One for the port and one for the village. The next step was actually adding details to the walls and the towers, so I went for this with for the and medium pillars. And this is the end result with all the walls and the towers. I've also placed some banners here and there. I've worked on the gates too, some small details on the gates. But yeah, overall I was I was really satisfied with this result. It took me a lot of time because I had to do every single one of them manually. And for the gates I went with a simple design, just a simple square gate. We do have, however, double doors, double wooden doors, because the castles used to have very, very thick wooden doors. And inside here you can see we have a double iron portcullis. Sometimes they were used to trap enemies, and sometimes they were just used to keep them away. For the towers I went with a simple design, nothing fancy, just like I said, a square tower, just try to add some details and keep the same theme throughout the whole castle. So the same details, you're gonna see some uh, spaces down there at the bottom of the tower, now I'm gonna come back to that because that's tied to the sewer. When it comes to the city sewers, I went for these small little wooden outhouses. There's nothing much going on here, just a small hole. But the entire system is of sewers is connected throughout the whole city. You're gonna see a lot of these small wooden outhouses around the houses or sometimes even in the houses. And every single one of them spills through the base of the towers into the sea or the lake. Outside the city, just behind the castle's walls, we're gonna have a small little village. Nothing fancy going on here, just a small place for the fisher, some farmhouses, a windmill, and a place for the hunters and also the woodcutters. 
we're gonna go into detail in every single one of these houses. This is the fishing hut. Nothing fancy outside, just some crates here and there, a small little garden. And behind there's a boat, small one, and a cute little place for fishing. Inside the fishing hut, like I said before, there's no, nothing much going on. Some fish here and there, a knife for processing, and a bucket, his fishing rod. Basically all the tools required for uh, fishing. Next we have one of the largest farmhouses. These guys are doing fairly well. They're living here in the village for years. They've managed to gather quite some resources. They have the largest garden. And if we take a look inside, we're gonna have triple beds. Three people live here. Nothing too fancy. Tools for working. Not much food going on. Just some herbs here and there and some wine on the top shelves. Another cute little farmhouse right here. Same conditions, same poverty inside if you're gonna take a look. Double beds in here, not much food. So yeah, these guys were not doing very well. Moving on to our third house in the village. There's a small little area for wood cutting just behind this house. There are a lot of logs and chopped wood down there. Also, these guys are tending to the village mill, where all the flour comes from for the bread of the castle. And if you're gonna take a look inside, same conditions, same poverty. I just try to keep the details at a minimum. Our fourth village house is not much. <laughs> really poor guys. Actually, this is one of the poorest you can find so uh, this is this villager is really not doing good you can see inside here it's just some uh, wine some tankards here and there small bread a bow so this is uh, this is not good right it's doing the worst of them all moving on to our hunter's hut this is how it looks from the outside it's just a log cabin Behind it, there's a small area for wood processing, because these guys tend to the wood as well, so they process wood out here. Inside, I just wanted to make it a true hunter's hut, some bows, some foods, some trophies. Moving into the city, the first building you're gonna see on your left is the blacksmith. So, uh, I'm gonna get back to this, but first, let me talk about the details. I wanted to add more details, but the game was laggy as it was, so adding even more details to the outside of the house would have made it me, for me impossible to uh, record this. Inside the blacksmith house, you're gonna see he has a, he's on the wealthier side. Lots of foods here. Downstairs, a little kitchen area where he eats. To the left, there, there's a small area for uh, processing. Outside on the deck you can see that this is where the forge is with all his tools, his coolers and whatever he needs to, uh, you know, do his work. Be the best blacksmith in town. Now if you're gonna move upstairs, the first thing when you climb up the ladder, you're gonna see some nice armor, some shields right here in this room. And this little hallway connects to two other rooms. So we're gonna have this small little room for a child. Nothing fancy going going in here. Some uh, lightning coming from a jack of turnip. On the other hand, in the blacksmith's room, we're gonna have a double bed. We're gonna have a vast array of armors, weapons, shields. Nice double bed, like I said. You're gonna have lots of storage, carpets on the floor. A rather rich table up here too. Some stamina potions near the bed for, you know, pleasant things. Right in the central square near the main keep, we're gonna have two very, very important things. And that's the gallows and the guillotine. Obviously, every single castle had a variation of uh, torture devices or uh, for punishing. So, uh, I've tried my best to recreate them in Valheim, and this is what I managed to end up with. 
Since we're outside, let's just take a look at the marketplace, which is also situated, situated in the central square. I tried my best to add a lot of details in here, so we're gonna have vegetables, fish, meat. We're gonna have tons of meads and potions. We're gonna have, obviously, weapons, rugs, leather. And we're gonna have a lot of armors from our uh, town's blacksmith. Next to the marketplace, we're having another farmer's house, but these guys are uh, definitely doing good because they live in the actual castle. Just behind, there's a small little outhouse and a nice area for wood chopping. I really like this cozy place. And inside, you can tell that they are doing way better than the farmers that are living in the village outside the castle walls. So, uh, yeah. Definitely better conditions in here in the town. Next to the small little house, we're gonna have a far larger house. Now, this is actually one of the richest families in town. This is how their house looks on the base floor. So, obviously, you can tell that they're doing fine. They have better food, they have access to a lot more wine and a lot more storage areas, of course. Up here, a nice rich hallway, as you can see. Lots of armors for decoration, trophies. Just keep an eye on the banners because there, there are some interesting stories in this town. So as you can see, the theme of the town in terms of banners and the color is black. But these guys, they have a secret. And in their child's room, as you can see here, their flag is white because they're trying to educate their child to be rebellious against the lord of the castle. And the same thing in the parents' bedroom goes the same thing. We're gonna have a lot of potions. We're gonna have a double bed, a lot of carpets, as you can see. But the banner is still white in here too. So behind the walls, they're on. They're using different colors. Moving on, this, folks, is the local tavern. Folk come here to drink and complain. So just outside here, we're gonna have a lot of tables, and you've guessed it, there's a lot of uh, meads and ale going on. Some food here and there, but yeah, a lot of space and accommodation for uh, everyone. This is how it looks inside on the base floor. So obviously you're gonna have tons and tons of meads and tankard and a nice barrel here. Moving on upstairs, we're gonna have a nice dining area right out here. This is kind of dangerous, especially if these guys are drunk, they might fall off there down the stairs. It happened a few times, but it's fine. They're doing good. No major fractures. And inside here, there are two rooms that kind of look the same. And you can tell that these rooms are used for certain activities because this is actually a tavern. So we're gonna have our faithful stamina meads right here near the bed for some extra boost when you're down. And the same thing goes in the other room. Nothing fancy, just a bed for uh, a tavern bed, if you will. For that weary traveler, you know that actually needs a place to rest, to rest his soul, and other parts. Neighboring the tavern is the royal kitchen. This is how it looks from the outside, nice little oven right there, and of course you're gonna have a lot of wood and some crates. Inside I tried my best to make it look like a medieval kitchen. Now I couldn't lit any fires out because of the instances, I had too many instances of the game at this time, and it would have, fire would have made it very, very laggy. But yeah, I try to add as many details as possible in here. Vegetables and potions and ingredients on the shelves. Also, we're gonna have, obviously, two large barrels of wine. Nothing fancy up here, just a little hallway between the two rooms. Some benches. But there's a nice story going in here, because uh, <laughs> the cook that's in charge of the kitchen likes to stuff himself with food. So he kind of steals a lot of food and brings it back to his room. So you're gonna see a lot of food stolen from the kitchen. Because he kind of is a hoarder, He's, he likes to gather a lot of food and eat it by himself. Next to his room, you're gonna have all the kitchen workers' room. There are a lot of beds here, some uh, food on the table, obviously. They have a nice little cozy room here. With all the accommodations necessary to you know, live a nice and peaceful medieval life. Behind the kitchen area, there's actually a nice storage for food, for all the cooked food and some of the ingredients. 
Inside this place is just packed with food, wine, ingredients, all sorts of vegetables. So I try to add as many as possible in here, as many details as possible. A rather shady looking house near the kitchen. On the base floor you're gonna see a lot of gold in chests and then a chair and some torture tools in here. Hmm. Upstairs, a white banner. And it kind of looks like this is the assassin's room. Next to his room, this is the bard's room, and he's actually in love with one of the girls from the tavern. So he actually writes songs while looking at her at the tavern. Of course, every good castle has stables, so this is what I came up with for the stables. Nothing fancy, just some straw there. I couldn't find any other details. Moving on next to the docks area, lots of crates here obviously, barrels, carts, and of course you're gonna have your ships and basically a lot of cargo. This is the actually granary where you're gonna have all your grains stored inside. Now I didn't have nothing else to decorate with, I can't have any other grains, so I used the beehives <laughs> to create piles of grains. Next to that we're gonna have two similar houses, nothing fancy here, just small houses for accommodation. We're gonna have two families that live in here. Simple decor right here, nothing too complicated. Double bed in one room, single bed in the other room. Like I said, the normal citizens live here between, between these walls. The second house is a bit richer, so these guys have more wealth in here, as you can see, you can tell by the decorations. Upstairs on the hallway there's another small bed for a child, another bedroom in a stamina meat there, some sausages. Over here we have the castle's jail. I didn't do anything fancy for this, just wanted to be cold and cruel, so nothing inside, no bed, no nothing. Prisoners would just stay on the ground. These are the barracks for the city guards. Nice little training area right out here where they can train. Some training dummies right there. And inside you're gonna find a lot of accommodations for all the guards. So simple simple things in here, chests for storage, for their own personal belongings, weapons on the walls, and some extra bedrooms in the towers. Each tower has two extra beds. Up on top of it is a place where they can all eat, so nice little spot for cooking there and you're gonna have barrels of wine for the guards and places at the table for each and every single one of them. The next building is the church, not too many details here unfortunately. Because like I said the game wouldn't allow me to, same for the inside, a simple inside of the church just added some red color and some candles as you can see here. Now there's something interesting going in the back of the church. We actually have a cemetery! Ta-da! <laughs> some coffins, some crosses here and a cart to actually, you know, grab the dead to the cemetery. And the most important building, finally, finally, we get to the main hall. Now this is the last form of defense for the uh, castle. It will actually serve for housing the lord with his family. Obviously you're gonna have a throne, tables full of meat, the treasury is the same in here in the main hall. And actually added some uh, toilets here, obviously. <laughs> you know, because we have sewers. Next to that is the royal kitchen. Where uh, the cooks actually are cooking all kinds of yummy, yummy, delicious things for the Lord. And then a small oven here in the kitchen. If we we're gonna go upstairs, we're gonna have a small little hallway and three doors for three separate bedrooms. One is for the prince. He has a club there, he likes to beat up skeletons in the woods, I guess. And a lot of stamina potions for, you know. And the next one is for the princess, so trying to do a girly girl room as much as Valheim allows me here. No pink. 
And the most important room is the king and queen's room, or the lord, lord's room. Obviously you're gonna have the fanciest stuff in here, they have their own bathtub, and the only bathtub actually in the castle. Also, this castle has a small little secret. The princess has a crush on one of the hunters, so she usually sneaks out of the castle at night. She goes down the stairs, through the main hall, and through the kitchen doors. There's a small little secret door outside the kitchen area. From there, she goes behind the jail, down the wooden stairs, and there's a small gap in the wall they never fix this gap, and she knows of this. She can actually sneak out of the castle through here. From there, she goes up the creek behind the hunter's cabin, where she meets with her hunter. And together, they actually go through the woods, through a small path, to this abandoned little shack in the middle of the woods. And there, some weird things happen. I'm gonna let you figure them out for yourself. And this was the castle, so thank you all so much for watching, thank you for your support, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye bye.